In 2022, Starlink has been pushing their RV service, although they don't have a router that runs off of 12 volt power. So anyone actually using their RV service in an RV has to use AC power, which means having to convert DC power from a battery bank to AC through an inverter and then back to DC again in the router itself. This is incredibly inefficient and stupid. My solution was to rip the router apart and rebuild it to work on 12 volt DC. So let's get blah, blah, blah. So there aren't any screws in this thing. Um, you can heat up the adhesive with a heat gun or something to make this a little more elegant. I chose to pry it off. If you do that, be careful because glass will chip and possibly end up on your floor where you'll step on it. So be careful with that. This little plastic thing just clips on and off. You don't actually need to remove that. I was winging it when I did this, so I took it off. So there's a metal heat shield in this, which acts as a heat sink. It's quite terrible, to be honest. To remove it, I drilled out these plastic, I don't even know what you would call those. They're just like melted plastic stumps that hold it in place. You can see I uh, used some wire cutters to cut those off after drilling. With that out of the way, there's two more of those little mounts next to the connector here. I removed one already. So this circuit board on top is actually the router and it's somewhat delicate. As you can see, it's got a very thin spot on the left there. There's also eight pins that act as a connector between the bottom circuit board, which is the power supply, and the router circuit board. So you have to unplug those. I gave it a little wiggle to kind of loosen up this plastic mount here and then just cut it away. And with those out of the way, the router circuit board comes out. As you can see, there's two main chips on this board that cause most of the heat. There's a few other ones also. None of them have heat sink. Here's a look at that 8-pin connector that connects the power supply to this router circuit board. Take note on the old power supply board. There's um, descriptions of each pin. You can use that as a reference later. And here's the flip side of the router circuit board. So with that board removed from the case, we're going to replace this ridiculous heat sink. I got this 100 by 40 millimeter heat sink off of Amazon. I'll have links in the description with all of the um, purchases I made for this project. That's double sided adhesive heat transfer tape. Basically just stick that on there stick the heat sink onto the chips that you want cooled and it's like magic. You can buy an assortment of heat sinks. I think the one I got was intended for a Raspberry Pi, but it had a nice collection of various sizes. So I use these for all the other chips on the board. This is a little janky, but I took a piece of the old heat transfer foam and stuck it on this little chip here so that I could cap it with a heat sink that I bought. That blue material under the large heat sink was removed after this shot and replaced with the double sided tape you saw earlier. This is the basic layout I came up with. The red board is the new power supply for the 50 volt side. I used 35 millimeter posts to support the router circuit board and the 50 volt power supply board. There are a couple of posts that were, I believe, 25 millimeter and some smaller nylon posts you see here. Those are to support the ethernet connection without causing any kind of shorts with the circuit board. You'll see those in the top right here. Here's the router circuit board installed. You can see the nylon post on top of the brass post. Those aren't screwed down but add a little support. It was tight but here's a quick fit check with the ethernet adapter attached to the circuit board. Drilling the hole for the Ethernet adapter connector. You can see that plugged into the circuit board here. Obviously it would have been better to drill this without all the components inside the box, but like I said, I was kind of winging it. 
Everything in this build, including this connector, uses M3 screws. Once again, I drilled right through the case while components are inside. Not the best practice, but I wasn't about to take everything apart again. This hole is for the power connector. Four M3 screws and some lock nuts to hold it all in place. Most of the components are now installed, and you can see the Ethernet adapter kind of coiled around on the side there. In addition to the 50 volt power supply, the circuit board also needs a 12 volt supply. Now we're connecting this whole thing to a 12 volt system, so we don't really need anything fancy, just a buck converter to keep that consistently at 12 volts. That's what this blue board is in the top left corner. I have that mounted on a 50 millimeter post to keep it above everything else. Space is getting tight at this point and I needed to keep it out of the way. Rather than drill a hole and try to route the proprietary ends to the network cable that goes between this router and the dish, I decided to just put a little divot between where the case and the lid close to allow that cable to pass through. I used regular pin connectors to connect the two power supplies to the circuit board. This connector supports eight pins, but I'm only using five. For the 50 volt supply, there are two positive connector pins and one negative. The 12 volt side has a positive and a negative. The rest of the pins are for LED lights and a ground, which would go to the actual ground. Since this is a vehicle, I left that unused. Despite 48 volts being printed on this board, it was actually putting out 50. Here's my connector being fed by both power supplies. Before going any further, I wanted to give this thing a test. Fortunately, everything did work. Obviously, beforehand, I made sure the voltages were correct on both power supplies. Out of the box, my big power supply here did not put out more than the input voltage. That was due to the low voltage cutoff adjustment being incorrect. There was an LED illuminated on the board to indicate this. So to recap, I've got 12 to 14 volts incoming from my battery bank. That's being converted to 50 volts by the red board and 12 volts by the little blue board, which is connected to the circuit board from the router. So it's working, but it's not quite done yet. This is a vehicle that's going to be vibrating and bouncing around and whatnot. So... I wanted to make sure this connector didn't just pop out at any time. I put a little silicone RTV around it and used a Q-tip covered in alcohol to kind of shape it and clean it up from areas that I got a little sloppy with. Then I used wire ties to keep all the wires bundled up nice and away from the heat sinks. The power supply board I'm using for the 50 volts also has a temperature regulated fan header. So I figured since that's there, I might as well install some active cooling in this thing. So I drilled a couple of 80 millimeter size holes in the case lid and installed a single 80 millimeter fan. The fan just uses a simple two pin connector, positive, negative, 12 volts. The fan included a grill, so I installed that because why not? The two mesh grills I bought separate. And here I am trying to plug the fan in while also holding a camera. And hooray, it works. Again, this is temperature controlled, so it won't run all the time. I had been running the Starlink throughout most of this process here, so it was already good and hot. Although not nearly as hot as the stock router, as anyone who owns one knows you could fry an egg on that thing. Still holding a camera with one hand. The final router uses about 1 amp at idle, 3 amps at load, and 4 amps when the motors are running. If you use the network port, the IP is 192.168.1.1 and cannot be changed. If you have anything else on your network using that IP address, you'll need to change it or remove it. And that's it. Like, share, and whatever.